three, two, one. We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your fear, extremist, right-wing, hard-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. Welcome back. We would like to thank Dr. Name? Jason Folk, hey, who gave us a call from Arizona to talk about Obamacare. And of course, Max Abramson came in to talk about some justice issues in New Hampshire. We uh, we definitely wanted to talk about some more things, but uh, we, we always run out of time. Always. Always running out of time. So uh, we, 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 we could do a longer show, but then we'd be here more. And I don't know. I don't know if my wife would go for that. With the travel time, you know, it, it sucks up pretty much all day long. It takes up the first half of the Saturday morning. So And all afternoon for the video. And then again, thanks to Ed Nail, who was just here to talk to us about vote fraud. We could probably have gone for hours on the subject. He had a big stack of paper, but we didn't have, <laughs> have enough time for that. So we're going to try to squeeze this in. Uh, Ken Iring is with us. And uh, news broke. And I lost my, where'd my, where'd my, where'd my paper go? Where is it? Synergistic is the company name. Yeah, Ken, uh, last Ken, week, the Wayne School Board was giving a proposal. A for behavioral management, energy conservation. Out of direct line of. And we're given the proposal 48 hours before the meeting. This contract, uh, I'll turn those off and you move them. Yeah. This contract would cost sure school district almost $577,000. And, and it was a no good contract. And we, I, I listened to you on Gerard at Large the other day. Yeah, um, it seemed like it was so much to cover, you know, and so little time. There was, uh, I was a little disappointed. It was great to be on a show, I was very, appreciative that he invited me on. Uh, the previous day he had uh, Mr. Murphy, uh, Mr. Mari, and Mr. Rufo, the three residents who are also in the construction industry, contractors, and they also bring with them uh, certain levels of expertise in energy conservation from multiple perspectives. So they all complement each other. And um, this is an important story for people to understand. Uh, I live in Windham. Uh, it's a very, it's a small town. It's surprising when you go to, to government meetings. You go to the planning board, the select board, uh, the school board. We all know each other. We all know each other on a first name basis. You have to understand that in, t in order to understand my concern about what this story is all about. Uh, we've got people, uh, I, I, I got to a point where I was frustrated with the waste, hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars over the years of waste uh, by our school district. And so I ran for school board and I won. And I'm grateful to be on the school board and have a voice uh, for the people. I really believe in the government that our founding fathers envisioned, which is representative government. I, I truly believe that the power of the government is with the citizens and that the people who get elected to office uh, are there as public servants. And it's difficult for me uh, to fulfill that obligation because in the summertime, uh, the school board chairman took it upon himself to unilaterally make a decision without discussion of the board uh, and without uh, a board vote to vastly limit public input. And what I mean by that is all of our town boards, the planning board, the uh, selectmen, the school board, we all not only had a, a, an item on the agenda called public comment, which is available for people to get up and, and voice their concerns and their thoughts uh, at the beginning of the meeting, but also during the meetings, uh, when the agenda items come up, when your comments can be taken into context, it can take into account uh, testimony or comments or input from other people, including, including contractors that may have uh, an interest in obtaining contracts. And after listening to the people who you've elected to represent and from the administration of each of those um, boards, and so when, when, you, when you take all that into account and you realize that now public input has been limited to uh, just a couple minutes in the beginning of a meeting, you realize that the voice of the people has been severely silenced. Uh, what happened at our school board meeting on January 6th for me is very, very troubling. Uh, we, we went through a process of listening to um, 
a presentation by a company called Synergistic. Now this is a behavioral management company who specializes, according to, according to their, their documentation, they specialize in energy conservation. And I looked through the public packet, which I, I received on December 31st. Now putting that into context, it's, you know, I worked. I wasn't going to look at this on New Year's Eve. Uh, it was a long weekend. So I did some research on Sunday. I didn't really get anything out of this. It was a, it was a fluff brochure, basically, of, of you know, 10, 15 pages, which didn't really tell me anything about the services that we were about to receive, nothing. Other than they were going to come in, they were going to projected savings of 1.8 million over 10 years, and uh, they were going to get from us 577,000, which is uh, listed as $9,200 a month. So they came up, you know, I, I, I looked at this, I was concerned, I said, behavioral management, you know, are they going to tell us to turn off the light switches and uh, turn down the thermostats? The bottom line is, yeah, that's part of, it's a, it's a vast part of what they're talking about doing, uh, vacuuming out your coils, uh, you know, nothing, nothing infrastructure-wise, nothing that's permanent. So I called up Mr. Murray, who's on the Citizens Facilities Committee. The man owns two net zero buildings. They're, they're virtually 100% energy efficient. How can, and he built them himself, okay? His company built them. If you tell me, uh, as a school board member, that uh, I don't need to listen to his input when we're talking about uh, signing a $600,000 contract with a, with a company that's going to come in and teach us how to be energy efficient, I would say that uh, we are doing the public a great disservice. So the bottom line is this. The company came in, they did their presentation. This is during the meeting now where we have been prohibited from engaging in conversation with the people we represent. We are yet again uh, about to spend uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars of the taxpayer money, in my opinion, wasting that money. And uh, the chairman is looking for uh, a motion to be made in order to accept or reject this contract. Now, in the real business world, that never happens. Companies come in, they make a presentation, they're thanked, they go away, due diligence is done into what we were told. Is this a good, is this good, is there, is there benefit? There was no cost-benefit analysis done. I had, I had not seen the contract at that point in time. And this is typical, typical um, approach for the school board spending money, for the school district spending money. Here's a presentation, we want an action on it. There's no, we get the materials within days of the meeting, we're presented with the, uh, with the presentation. We can't vet, we're making our decisions on what we're being told. I'm the kind of guy who likes to do my homework. So with all that said, Mr. Murray, who has, who's, who's been a very big part of, of actually pointing out where we have wasted money, I'm very grateful of. One of my platforms when I ran was I want to get the teachers more involved, I want to get the residents more involved. We have experts in our town who, who could bring uh, a, a, a vast new set of knowledge into our decision-making process and, and could help us not only, uh, not only save money but spend that money much more uh, wisely and efficiently. So, you know, Mr. Murray, after, after sitting in on meeting after meeting, month after month, this is about four or five months now where the public virtually cannot speak unless arbitrarily approved for by the chairman. And, and I'm not saying anything, by the way, you know, behind the chairman's back. I speak openly, honestly, and freely. All of these thoughts I write in the paper. I try to do it as, um, as respectively as possible. And I try to give uh, leeway as much as, as much as I can, but it's really come to a point where it, it, it needs to be discussed in the public forum. So it got to the point where a vote was going to be called and Mr. Murray uh, he got frustrated, uh, passionately said, uh, excuse me sir, are you, are you kidding me? Are you about to take a vote that could cost, you know, that, 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 that could cost us, you know, millions of dollars and you're not going to take public input? And at that point, a recess was called, the cameras were shut off and the police were called. And I have an issue with that because if we are a small town. We know each other by name. And, and these people have spent hundreds of hours on the facilities committee. Mr. Murray has gone up on the roof of our, um, 
uh, of, of one of our buildings and, and literally pointed out where we had spent $40,000 um, to, get, to get a report to tell us why our building has been leaking for six, seven, eight years and still has never been fixed. And I think at this point, uh, I'd like to turn it over to him, let him share his thoughts because uh, I, I but, but, but before I do that, Tom, I just want to, I just want people to know how grateful I am that you've, you've gotten involved. I know this man has given up countless hours of time with his family. His business has suffered, uh, and it's just, it's, it's an injustice that you've been treated the way that you've been treated. Not only you, but Mr. Amari and Mr. Rufo as well. Thank you, Kent and Tom Amari, for the listeners. Guys, thanks for having me on. Sure. Um, um, I, I, I concur with a lot of the things that Mr. Hiring said. It, it's very frustrating. Um, you know, being a professional, being in the business, donating and volunteering your time, and, and, and this is a lot of time away from my family, and I thank my wife and my children for putting up with me, but at the end of the day, that's why I do it, you know, and I do it for all the other kids in the district. I, I want the kids in the district to have a voice. Um, I want to see the spent actually make it to the classroom. That's the important thing for me. I, I, I think a lot of the people in town, I, I've never heard from anybody that's against education. I think what they're against is the foolishness and the wasteful spending that is part of the education that really never becomes part of the education that the children receive. I mean, this particular contract that we're talking about, Synergistics, that's $577,000. Uh, that's a lot of crayons. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it is. And um, A few microscopes. A few microscopes. Function burners. Some computers, and, and that will never get there. And that's the frustrating part. So, um, my experience, you know, is recent within the school board. Probably the past year, I, I've gotten involved, and that was just from watching a few meetings and just realizing that, you know, there needs some to be some help and some clearer insight on that board, and um, especially where a lot of the decisions that are being made circumvent around facilities type things. And being in the business my entire career. I felt as though I could offer some of those, um, you know, answers and solutions. Um, unfortunately, though, the input's not being taken. I think my first experience was back in the spring. It was on a uh, a portable, and uh, is a very contentious issue. Um, because a portable. A portable classroom. classroom. Yeah, ten, 10 classrooms and portable. You mind um, if I set that up, Tom? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, the, the portables were actually purchased uh, in 2000. Well, in August of 2012. Now prior to that, the previous superintendent had recommended we not buy them, that uh, we continue to lease them year after year. They were dropped off, they were like 13 years old when they were dropped off in 2009 when the state mandated that uh, all towns have to offer kindergarten. So we didn't have the space, so uh, the state, you know, we said it was an un unfunded mandate, so the state said, okay, we'll, we'll pay for the rental of the portables while you guys uh, put in the permanent space. So uh, the time came where uh, we built our kindergarten, we were done, ready to turn, open up the door in 2012, and we had an opportunity to either continue to lease the portables and use them for other crowding issues, or we could tell them to take them away. So at that point in time, the, uh, the administration recommended that we go ahead and we buy them because we needed the space for $340,000. They were asked by a school board member, how long do we have on these? Five plus years, it's a good price. Everything's, you know, we recommend that you do this. A year later, the same, re this, the, the administration then turned around and said, um, we've had the modules, uh, portables modules uh, evaluated. We think we should throw them out and we should buy new ones for $1.3 million. So the s company that we <coughs> bought the modules from is the same company that was going to sell us the new modules for $1.3 million. So there's no conflict of interest there. Um, <laughs> so in addition to that, so the school board, after hearing some feedback from the public, said no, we're going to stick with them. So two weeks later, a uh, Wyndham resident contractor, so people who have vested interests in our community, went down to the module building, he looked at it, he saw that there were very severe issues with it. Uh, the, the roof was leaking, uh, 
Uh, there were pipes that were going through the sides of the buildings that were never properly sealed. There were holes literally by the, uh, the AC panel where rodents could literally crawl in and go into the, uh, you know, underneath uh, the foundation area. And he, he pointed all this out. He did slideshows, talked about 20 minutes, showed up, showed up one uh, meeting, gave him a thumb drive, they put it in, and he went through uh, issue by issue and said, if you don't address these issues, uh, you know, it's going to be very serious. We're, we're going to have serious issues here. And so um, he said for, for, for about 500 bucks, uh, you could address almost all of these. The school board did nothing. And they found mold uh, early in the following uh, winter, January, or January time frame. And they said, they, they found a very small patch of mold, by the way, a very tiny patch. And at that point, they said, well, we have to take all the kids out. They moved them to uh, different buildings, including moving, moving uh, four of the third grade classrooms up to the <coughs> high school. And at that point, uh, they started to pay companies uh, tens of thousands of dollars to try to figure out how much it was going to cost. And that's where Mr. Murray came in. Sorry for the long-winded introduction, no. but I, this is, this is, there's a history to these modules. And I wanted people to know that the waste that Mr. Murray is about to talk about goes back even further than when he got involved. Right. And, and, I, and I appreciate that, Kim, that, you know, just to convey to the public and, you know, what transpired up to, up to this point. So it was at that point where the, the, the uh, district uh, decided to spend thousands of dollars with um, mold abatement companies and demolition companies. And the thing that struck me as odd was there was no investigation that happened before this work transpired. Um, no one went in there with moisture meters, no one went in there with thermal imagery instruments, no one went in there and did any of these exploratories prior to making these decisions. I took it upon myself and it was open to the public for people to go there and show up to the, to the portables. I took that opportunity to go there with exactly that, moisture meters, a flare thermal imaging instrument, and I actually flared the entire school. And I actually put together a drawing and a, um, a report, you know, something that I would normally charge clients thousands of dollars to do. And I was able to clearly identify all the areas that were, that had moisture in them. And uh, upon the conclusion of that, it was, it was very minor. And it was clear to me <coughs> that the repairs could be made and the updates um, could be made, um, you know, in a cost effective way to go ahead and, and remedy the situation. So I had a school board member actually had reached out to me and um, they said they were going out to bid on some of these repairs. And if, if I could, if I could put a proposal together for the district and I said, certainly I'd, I'd do that. And, and thus I did, I did. And what was interesting at that point, I showed up to a public hearing and um, I listened to um, a company go ahead and give a presentation um, and their fix for the solution was a total of $832,000. Oh. Guaranteed maximum price. Yeah. So keep, I, I had the same reaction because keep in mind, I'm a, my price that I came up with was $246,000. That's and, and a significant difference between between the two of us. Now, and to put that into context, something that Mr. Murray has told me more than once, he does top shelf work, absolutely, no question about it. He said to me, Ken, if you want to get it down to around 200000 you can do that. You know, you'll find people who will do it for, for about 200000 That's correct. And, and keep in mind, I, I was not looking for the work. No. I was simply doing this as 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 my my gift to the town to look out for them to be the watchdog so to speak to make sure that they were getting fair pricing and and I, I even went so far as to do all that investigatory work at no charge for the district and what were the two prices again uh it was 832 versus 246. Now, now here's the kicker when mr murray got up to do his presentation the school board chairman the same person who called the police on him he wanted to prevent Mr. Murray from giving his presentation. And I think that's the problem that you see in a lot of school boards. We're seeing this in, you know, Wyndham, Dover, Hampton, um, Guilford. Guilford, obviously, with, with the case with the book. 
we're seeing, and being a member, you know, I've served my time on my budget committee, but we see these school boards over and over again, very insular, very haughty, very, you elected us, but we rule over you. The, you know, we're in charge here, shut up you peons kind of deal. And I think that the New Hampshire School Board Association is behind this because, he, yeah, we've got 300 and, no, a couple hundred school districts. But this is starting to repeat itself over and over again. S somewhat different situations. You're, you're talking about a building. Yep. Guilford was a book. Dover was something else. And, and I just look at this and go, my, my solution to you is run for school board. To have a resource like you, that's what the community input is supposed to be. Instead of people just, I, I mean, your story of the school board won't let you talk, they won't respond to you. We're seeing this over and over and over again. You know, Guilford's the same way. Two public input sessions, and they literally mean input. There's no back and forth. Right. You've got these elected people. They actually put an ordinance in place to say, the parents, if you've got a problem, brought up by this book problem, you can talk to the principal. Right. And then they put an ordinance <clears throat> in place where, but then it's up to the principal whether, whether or not you could talk to the school board, otherwise you can't. So you've got elected representatives saying, you can't talk to us. This is not a representative democracy. Correct. As you first started off with. And this is a huge problem. I'm glad you guys came here to talk about it because we've got to get this out there. But really the only way to get rid of it is for people like, you know, you're on the board, yep. stay on it, start doing community organizing. It works for conservatives as well as the liberals. Start getting the voter list, start contacting people put your case together and beat the bastards that way. You really have to do it that way and say, this, this is what they do, this is what I promise we will do. And just make that case. We have uh, about five minutes left. Do you guys want to hang out and do another segment or we got time? Because I, 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 I don't know if Skip can stay. I, I, I'm just throwing it out there. We should talk about the monorail boondoggle. All right, all right, we're gonna, okay, so let's keep going. We got a couple more minutes and right. we'll just keep talking. So, so, so let me just touch upon one thing that you brought up, Skip. You talked about top-down and how this is migrating across the state, which is a, a real concern of mine. And um, I put in, I, I sit on the policy committee, so I, I put in for a change to the public comment portion of the meetings. And it was not well received by our superintendent. Uh, he, we're 180 degrees out of, out of sync with this. He believes that people uh, on the school board are elected to make the decisions and that we are there <coughs> to make those decisions. Uh, I strongly disagree. I believe that we need to listen to the input of the public, represent them, and then run the schools based upon what our community wants. And so uh, we're about to address this issue on Tuesday night. You know, it will come before the board. Uh, I am putting in uh, my, the, ch the small changes that I made uh, state something to the effect that uh, that, that the members of the public <coughs> shall be allowed to engage not only in comment but discussion or dialogue with the school board not only during the public comment section but also during the time that each agenda item is discussed. Yeah, Ken, if I could... Sorry, go ahead. Ken, if I could just jump in and add to that. So, you know, th th there's, a, there's an apparent behavior that's going on here. And subsequent to that portable decision, that's when the chair made this unilateral decision that basically limits public input to three minutes in the beginning of the meeting. But it's very difficult to have any constructive input when you have no idea what what they're going to talk about. It's not in the context. It's, it's context not in the context of the conversation. Exactly. So I I can go on and on. We'll probably do another show about all the other things that I I I, I, have, I found. I I, I found um, issues with the, their SAU roof and the pricing. They paid for probably three times market value. Um, there was another incident with another roof, which was hundreds of thousands of dollars, which they spent um, over $40,000 to hire an envelope specialist to look at you know, their ongoing leaking roof that had been leaking for years. And, and, at and the end of the day, it wasn't even the roof that was leaking. It was the masonry. And, and the report that got generated is typically provided as free by the person or the company that you hire to repair Yeah, a works. roofing company would have done that at no cost. So clearly, you know, they're making, um, you know, they're not making 
you know, smart decisions on behalf of the district. And back to, to the issue that I have with that, those dollars are not making it to the classroom. You know, and, and if I'm, as I'm adding these things up in my head, I'm like decision after decision after decision after decision, you know, we get into the range of millions of dollars at this point. And, and some of uh, these millions of dollars that are wasted, they, 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 you never get that back. So the opportunities for these children, you know, and we have some issues in our schools. We have some overcrowding issues in our schools. And I, I just look at that and I say, wow, these, these solutions, uh, the, this, this mismanagement could have already offered the solution to fix our, some of these problems. And that's the frustration. So back to the meeting um, this, at, on the 6th, you know, I listened to the synergistics proposal, a lot of fluff. In, 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 in no meat and potatoes. I want to see something quantifiable, something measurable, something that's easy, oh, oh, identifiable. I just gotta jump in because we're running out of time and it's really important to make this point. Synergistics is, is going to control the calculations of the cost savings. They use software that was purchased from Enron. Remember them? Mm -hmm. Okay, just wanted to make sure everybody understood. Yeah. Sorry Tom for coming no, no. And, um, and and I don't blame a company coming in here and wanting to sell something. And I listened for the entire meeting and I heard how some school board members trusted the business administrator and, and I'm fine with that. And you know, to take a line from Rich Gerard's show, trust but verify. And and that was that, that rung rung in my ear, trust but verify. And that's simply what I was looking to do. I wanted to show the board the, the verification process, the math. You can't, you, you cannot argue the math. The math's the math, the facts are the facts. And not given that opportunity, it, being frustrated with the history of this, this, this ongoing behavior is not allowing the public to speak. Um, I stood up in frustration and I said, and I said exactly that. I said, and probably a little bit more raised voice than I have now, but are you serious? Are you, are you gonna take a vote on this to tonight? Immediately, it was, it was irresponsible of the board. It, it was unnecessary for the board to do that. And, and really there was, was no, there was no rush. There was no time. <coughs> I, I brought up many, many concerns, and I was so concerned about this. The next day, I took an unpaid day off of work. I did some research. I had a few people help me with that. We found that the Inspector General's Office in Massachusetts had written uh, a report, a, an advisory uh, for school business officials. <laughs> And uh, there was just so much, so much, you know, We can go into the next questions. segment. We're going to keep talking about it because it's important. We're going to stay late. Stick around. Extra bonus grog talk coming up. Grog TV.